This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live on a Monday, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Monday, April 18th, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. Hope you're surviving tax day. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man who is ready to roll out the red, or should I say blue carpet, for Big Game Boomer at BYU. BGB is, uh, he or she is now known, easily the best setting in college football, Big Game Boomer says. Can't wait to visit BYU football this fall, quoting college football home, which uh, said stadium of the morning. Yes, this backdrop's unbelievable for Lavelle Edwards Stadium. So we're looking forward to what we assume is an Oklahoma fan, mm. obviously, Big Game Boomer. Come on. Boomer Summer, um, to, to Provo at some point. We don't know if BYU is going to host Oklahoma or even play Oklahoma in the two years that OU is in the Big 12 with BYU or BYU with OU. But, yeah, uh, the setting is unbelievable. We'd love to host whoever wants to come to Provo. The account that posted that about Lavelle Edwards Stadium said, the only game I've watched in LES was the blowout by Utah State over BYU in 2018. So we need to get that person back for a yeah. BYU win. Yeah, well, come back to, like, any other game. It's different now. <laughs> it is a little bit different just, than it was. Just about every other game. In 2018. Yeah. Our show lineup today has just changed due to some breaking news with BYU basketball. We'll get to that in just a moment. More departures from the current BYU basketball roster. Who is leaving and what happens now? Also, we have Bill Connolly of ESPN on with us to discuss the SP Plus projections. Is BYU the second best team on their own schedule if they were amidst their own opponents? Man, some lofty projections, lofty words from Bill Connolly. We will ask him that very question. And what's the deal with not having Luke Staley as one of the top running backs in recent 50 years? Plus... Uh, Anik Hachkevich has been awesome for BYU Women's Golf. She will also join us. But for now, bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. And as promised, basketball news. Jake Hatch of 1280 The Zone Sports Network reporting that Caleb Lohner and now Gideon George have requested to put their names in the transfer portal. Neither have plans to return to BYU. Whoa. Big news. We'll break it down coming up in What's Trending. Minnesota announces its game with BYU in 2025, rescheduled from 2020, is canceled. Cougars are going to be canceling a lot of games with only three to four non-conference games in the Big 12 starting in 2023. Off-season workouts in the National Football League begin for several Cougars, including Zane Anderson, Matt Bushman for the Kansas City Chiefs. It's weird not to say Daniel Sorensen in the Chiefs anymore because he's now yeah, with the Saints. Weird. Michael Davis of the Los Angeles Chargers. Zach Wilson with the Jets. Dax Milne with the Washington Commanders. Good that they have a mascot now. Portman Kafusi and Zach Dahl also suiting up for the Bandits tonight in the USFL. Oh, yeah, that. Baseball, amazingly, wins three of four versus Nebraska with all four games decided by one run. Days after Mike Littlewood resigned as head coach, the Cougars are now 10-3 versus Power 5 teams this year. Not bad. Cougars play at Utah tomorrow at 8 Eastern on BYU Radio and the BYU Radio app. Let's get to our track and field roundup, starting with the Mount Sac Relays and Beach Invitational. Courtney Wayman put together the third-best all-time time in the NCAA in the steeplechase, 926-88. Incredible. Sable Lohmeyer El Bakri finished third in the discus throw. And that moves her up from number four to number two all-time at BYU. Zach McWhorter continues to do his thing in the pole vault as he tied his own school record, jumping 18 feet, 8.25 inches, also at the Mount Sac Relays. Men's volleyball played top-ranked UCLA tough, but lost in four and five sets, respectively. Saturday even led 2-0 in the second match. Davide Gardini put up a career-high 30 kills on senior night. Incredible performance in his final home game. The Cougars played Pepperdine in the MPSF tournament as the sixth seed. Pepperdine's the three seed Wednesday at UCLA. BYU split with Pepperdine, so hey, go win Wednesday and just Beat see what waves. happens uh, You know, on Friday. Let's go. Michael Rucker pitched two-thirds of an inning and had a strikeout in the Cubs versus Rockies game. Love that he's still in the majors. Cougars in the minors. Jackson Clough hit a home run yesterday for his Senators in a 2-1 win over the Portland Sea Dogs. Are you a Sea Dogs fan? No, that's Portland, Maine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Strong Portland. The OG Portland. <laughs> 
Yeah, I guess used, it is the OG, used to right? Be the Portland Beavers, and then they moved to Salt Lake to become uh, the Bees. That's right. Or the Buzz, I guess. The, be- the Buzz, the Bees. The Buzz, the Bees, the Bees, the Bees. Yep. Daniel Schneeman went one for three and one for four in a doubleheader yesterday for two Rubber Ducks wins over the weekend. Rubber Ducky, you're the one. Mm-hmm. And Cameron Tucker gets to start for Gotham FC. I am vengeance. In a 3 1 loss to Ashley Hatch in the Washington Spirit. Her next game is against Michaela Coolahan and the Orlando Pride. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. The roster shakeup continues for BYU men's basketball. Again, reports. Led off by Jake Hatch of the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, have Caleb Lohner placing his name in the transfer portal, along with Gideon George. Man, it's one thing to lose Alex Barcelo and T. John Lucas to graduation, but now throwing the likes of Gideon George and Caleb Lohner, Hunter Erickson. I mean, there are now, I think, six people that have declared like Nate Hansen. we're at Nate Hansen. Yeah. Yes. Scholarship players, right? Mm-hmm. We're gone. Okay, so now with this most recent news, Jerem, if Caleb Lohner indeed is leaving BYU basketball, according to this report, what does it mean for the future of Cougar Hoops under Mark Pope? Yeah, it's concerning uh, because you were already going to lose a a couple of notable guys and scorers, right? Caleb Lohner, um, you know, reports have him in the transfer portal. Doesn't mean he's gone per se, but certainly it looks that way if that's true. That's a big move, and it's not just the production that would be lost. It's sort of like, okay, culturally, what's going on there? Why is there this mass exodus of guys, especially Caleb Lohner, who you thought was going to be one of the main guys or maybe the face of the team uh, the next two years? So obviously um, something's going on there that is concerning, and uh, Caleb Lohner was was fit to be one of the main dudes, and so not not good uh, right now if indeed this is true and he – is transferring, of course, signed at Utah originally, came to BYU, has been um, really good at times. Obviously, there's been some inconsistency shooting the ball from three, but a guy that we all feel like, man, he could really turn it on and be a heck of a player, like like uh, pro potential for sure, physically a beast, excellent rebounder, good defender, was asked to play the five quite a bit this year. Gideon George, not a shock per se, because he had already kind of, hey, I want to test the NBA waters, uh, didn't sign an agent, but if he's if he's looking to transfer, he's just looking for the best option, it looks like, for him. This this is concerning because these are two guys that you'd pencil in as starters yes. going into next year. And you're already losing two starters in Barcelo and uh, Lucas. So yeah. it's like, whoa, is this a brand new team next year? Like, completely now? It's one thing to lose a couple of starters to graduation. It's another to lose a guy who still has two years of eligibility. And we thought, man, the way he played his freshman season, the way he shot his ball, he – shot the ball from the three-point line and all over the field. We thought he might be one of the all-time greats. Sean Farnham of ESPN said, look, I think Caleb Lohner is going to be an all-West Coast Conference performer at some point. Took a dip this year, but I thought, oh, he'll bounce back. He's Caleb. He's resilient. Give him two years. to, f- You know you know what I mean? Now, don't be surprised yeah. to see Caleb Lohner go wherever he's going to go and be awesome. I just hope it's not to That's follow an assistant coach that recently left BYU to go to Utah because Caleb was initially recruited and committed to the University of Utah. Assistant coach Chris Burgess just went there. Does Caleb Lohner follow Chris Burgess to Utah? Would not shock me to see that happen. Yeah, yeah, I, nope, I could totally see that. And uh, if if that happens, that's a hard pill to swallow, right? We've We've not seen that a ton, and I talked about that last week, which was we've not seen – the big-time BYU athlete leave a bunch. We've been hoping they come in, Puka Nakua, Kingsley Suomati, and so on and so forth, Alex Barcelo. Granted, Alex wasn't a big deal at Arizona. He became a big deal here. That's different. But a Caleb Lohner to Utah would be hard. We're, st- we're staring at him playing again in basketball. The reality is that's, that could very well happen. What you bring up is a, is a real, real possibility. In fact, it feels like the most likely possibility of anything. That's not going off something I've heard or know. It no. just seems logical, right? Sure, sure. The, the other thing is now the already dire situation for the BYU big men just gets even more crucial, and there's more. Now, now you need to sign wonder, another one. Exactly. It's not just signing one big man. Now does BYU need to sign two or three big guys along with a couple of point guards? Are yes. we talking about BYU bringing in, like, five players from the transfer portal? If, Is that what we're getting to? If not more. Oh. If not more, because um, you gotta, you, gotta repl- you need a point guard. You might need another two guard. BYU is in the mix for a high-profile JC player committed elsewhere. Um, that was a bummer. Yeah, there there are good players to be had, but if 
if BYU is going to make the tourney, this feels like they're going to have to retool it completely. And now it's a lot of new names, which isn't a problem to me. Like the whole like we grow our own players. We're we're basketball farmers age of uh, we are farmers dot com. Uh, <laughs> BYU basketball era. I, I wonder if that's over. Obviously, the transfer portal is huge, like huge. And the, the one transfer and no penalty thing, mm. that changes how you can recruit. But it can't be a bunch of grad transfers, right? But you just can't build something. You're just hiring assassins. They do the job and then they leave, right? Um, and, and, yes, you need, you need some homegrown stuff. You need get, Like Alex Barcelo here for three years. Granted, it would have been two minus COVID. Yeah, two is, two is fine. You need a Chase Fisher. You need an Alex Barcelo sometimes, right? So we'll see what BYU gets. But certainly you've got to replace – uh, multiple guys in the transfer portal now. Like you've got to bring in probably four guys that are going to contribute right away. Like this this roster has been depleted now, according to sources, with graduation and transfers. So BYU is having happened to it what is happening to everybody else, which is hey, you know what Milwaukee wasn't liking when Tijon Lucas left them as one of the main guys and came here. Now Caleb Lohner as a starter all year. Uh, he's going elsewhere. And is it Utah? We'll see, man. Well, during one of these breaks, I'm going to try and do some quick math during the two-minute commercial break that we have and figure out the offensive production that BYU is losing from last year's team to now what's left for next year's squad. Right. You're adding Barcelo, Lucas, Loner, and George. Four, Four starters. starters. Yeah. Four starters. How much production is BYU going to have back I mean, Foose did his part. Foose was great. It's Foose is looking around going, where is everybody? Where did everybody go? Where, where did everybody go? Is Dallin Hall now returning from his mission going to be thrust into a starting position potentially? If he is, and Dallin's good, BYU ain't attorney team. You know what I mean? You can't hand the keys to an RM fresh off the mish and uh, go, yep, let's go. He's really good. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's just the timing. It takes a second. So, yeah, you're looking at the top two scores are gone. Third score, uh, you know, Foos is there. He's back. Fourth leading score was Gideon George. Seneca Knight has an increased role on this team. Uh, you know, Caleb Loner after that. Gavin was gone. But, like, Trevin Nell and Spencer Johnson and Tiki Ali Atiki, it's like, okay, you guys are going to have to help carry this. But I, I don't believe that the returning guys necessarily are, okay, they're just thrust into the starting lineup. BYU is going to need to get, like, three new dudes that probably go into the starting lineup, Spence. Because I think sure. y- you could have a Trevin Nell, Seneca Knight, Spencer Johnson, two of those three B starters, potentially. But I think you need a point guard. I think you need a two guard. I think you need a big. That start. That start. Yes, right now. So, right now, yes. And so here's, here's the good news from this. I don't like that we're talking about lit- literally 15 minutes ago, we're not thinking Caleb Loner's not a coog but sources are that he, he's in the transfer portal, so probably not, is, okay, if you're Mark Pope, you can say, hey, I, I got spots right away, and we're a team that expects to go to the NCAA tournament. We That's missed. a nice pitch for anybody in the transfer portal. And, and after this year, you can play in the Big 12, the best league in, in America. So th- there are opportunities for guys who want chances that there weren't spaces before. That's probably the positive out of this. But I would rather have these two guys than not. So hear me out right now as currently constituted with the roster as it stands. <laughs> okay. You've got Fusini Traore playing the five as the center. Well, he's a four. Right? But yeah. I, right. You need a five. You need a five. But if you had if to you roll had out to, a starting okay. five yes. right okay. now, okay. you've got Fus at the five. Yes. And then BYU's got to go small on the perimeter. Seneca so Knight Seneca Knight, four. Spencer Johnson, Trevin Nell, and Dallin Hall is probably your point guard coming off of a mission. Yeah. Th- this team... Might not even make the NIT right now, just because no depth. It's this isn't the. It's team. going to change. This isn't the team. Clearly, BYU is like roll BYU out. is going to pull in three, maybe four significant key contributors, plug and play right now. We hope. We hope. No, they have to, Spence. Not we hope. They will. <laughs> they have to. Just what level will those players be? Yeah. This is going to determine what BYU can pull in from the transfer portal, Jerem is going to determine if the Cougars make the NCAA tournament next season. Yeah, 100%. BYU's got four scholarships open, uh, assuming Loner and George bounce, which those are the reports, right? And assuming that everyone else comes back. Because we don't know, like, wow. yeah, we don't know. Is everyone else happy and good? Wow. Like, are they going to stay here? So four scholies open. Wow. Four right now. 
And that assumes you're giving. Here, so here's who's coming back. Here's the team next year. You ready? As of now. Trey Stewart, Dallin Hall, Richie Saunders, Tanner Toulson, all three of those guys back from a mission. Trevin Nell, Spencer Johnson, Seneca Knight, and then you have two bigs, Tiki Ali Atiki and Fusini Trejo. Okay, and, and maybe they're both starting. Maybe Atiki is maybe the Atiki's center. Starting. Well, maybe Fus is the four, then you go Seneca, and then the guard line is TBD. I don't want Atiki to have to start yet. I know. No. <laughs> I, 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 want, uh, I want someone with a little more experience. I love Atiki's growth. I think he's, he's becoming a really good player. Yeah, so it, listen, this is the natural attrition of the offseason. Ha- it hasn't happened a ton to BYU. It feels uncomfortable right now. This is the game that's played. This is how it is, and it's, it's unfortunate. But uh, if you're going to get some, you got to give some. So that's, that's the, the BYU can't just get good transfers and never give any. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, come on. I mean, full clarity, about five minutes before the show started, we got wind of this. The news, this is yes. the beauty of having a live show. Yes. We react in the moment. I love it. For better or for it's better worse. Better than happening, announcing it at 11. Good news and <laughs> bad news alike. When we get the breaking news, we've got that, we've got that live scenario. Yeah. All right, coming up on this very live show. Which BYU football game would we want to watch 292 times? <laughs> I have a clear answer. And does Bill Connolly agree with his numbers? Because he says BYU is going to be really good, like top 25 good for sure in his SP Plus projections. We'll talk to him next on BYU Sports Nation. William, you dog. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Accidents don't just happen 9 to 5. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried & Jensen is here for you 24-7. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24-7. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. the ups and downs of elite young gymnasts and an exclusive behind the scenes look as they twist, flip and bounce their way to the podium. See the commitment, effort and mindset it takes for these competitors to rule their sport on Gym Stars, on BYU TV or on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Softball's back on BYU TV Wednesday at 8 Eastern as the 25 and 10 Cougars host Utah Valley on the BYU TV app. They had a rough week last week because two games were canceled. They were just chilling. But the good news is they can study for their finals, Mm -hmm. hopefully finish them. Good luck to all the BYU students, by the way, in our studio, uh, on our crew, and on campus uh, during finals week here. I've said it several times on the air. There is no joy quite like walking out of the last final of any given semester, knowing you don't have to go back to school for those that don't go to summer school for at least a few months. Yeah, I never went spring, summer. Uh, Not a single time. I I never went. I I just wanted to work and and hang out and uh, swim and just – you know, do the Provo stuff. Enjoy, enjoy the life. Yeah. Okay. Let's go up to Squaw Peak a couple times, you know, do whatever. <laughs> we are live in Studio V with your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play moving <laughs> right along. I'm Spencer Linton what? alongside Jerem Jordan. Joining us now is college football insider and expert, the man who produces the SP Plus projections. He is Bill Connolly. He is awesome. And BYU fans love you extra 
these days, Bill, because you've got the Cougars rated pretty high in the SP Plus projections. What's the story there? Why is BYU essentially a top 25 team according to your numbers? Well, the biggest thing they have going for them this year is they're number two in my returning production figures. Um, you know, top 25 on offense and then just straight up number one on defense. Uh, and, and obviously now I'll go through and update the the rosters again after the spring and we'll see that'll change something for, for this team or that team. But that's the biggest thing they have. You know, last year, their offense dealt with massive turnover and still played at a top 15 level. They were 15th in, in offensive SP plus the defense did, did fall back quite a bit um, there all the way to 79th, I think, but now they return just about everybody. And so they're projected to rebound into the top 50. So that's, uh, that's a recent history plus returning production plus recruiting. That's, that's basically the SP plus formula. And at least on two of those three uh, BYU, BYU looks really, really good for, for 2022. How would you characterize what BYU did in 21 and moving forward now that the Big 12 is in the mix, given that 2020 was sort of this like unique season, BYU schedule blew up, they didn't play any Power Fives, they had Zach Wilson. And then 21, BYU actually kind of responded, right, with a uh, 6-1 record against Power Fives in a 10-win season. Yeah, I mean, they still, you know, I think they were, I don't remember where they finished in 2020. It was top 15 for sure. I think borderline top 10, if I remember right, in SP+. Plus. Um, and, and they didn't fall last year. They, they fell to 46. Now, that was partially because of kind of a mid-season swoon a little bit. They were 60th uh, two months into the season, and then they rebounded from there, obviously. Um, but it was still considering what they lost. They were, you know, they're number two in returning production this year. They were bottom 10 in returning production last year. So to still be able to play at a top 50 level, play really good offensively, again, despite what they lost, including the offensive coordinator, which didn't even count in the projections, um, you know, to be able to withstand that and still play at a high level, you know, that's, that's the best thing you can, that's the best way you can prove yourself, I guess, um, is, you know, to do it and then lose a bunch of guys and then do it again immediately. The offense is kind of a, a known quantity at this point. And, and it just, it, it'll just all depend on how much the defense rebounds this year. Bill Connolly is an ESPN staff writer and college football insider. He is on BYU sports nation this morning. We were putting BYU in a list of all of the Cougars opponents in 2022 and very quickly noticed that the only team above BYU in the SP plus <laughs> is Notre Dame. And then there's BYU and then Baylor and Oregon really close behind, but is BYU really the second best team on their own schedule other than, I mean, are they <laughs> only worse than Notre Dame? <laughs> Well, I, I think Arkansas is a really interesting team this year. It's hard to um, it's hard to get a, a particularly good read. They do lose a lot of pieces from last season, so we'll find out exactly if, if if it turns out that they've been recruiting particularly well and that culture has really taken hold. They might be top 15, 20 this year, and that would probably put them ahead of BYU. But you know, my numbers hated Oregon last year, um, at, at least compared to you know the, the the title hype they were getting for a good portion of the season. Yeah, and um, and you know, Baylor loses quite a bit and they, and Baylor won a lot of close games last year, which is hard to replicate. So maybe they, you know, they finished really high in the polls, but maybe they weren't quite, you know, that level of team. Uh, they got some close breaks in, in, in key moments. So they're right. I think the, the bottom line is that, yeah, Notre Dame is probably ahead of them, but everybody else is, uh, you know, BYU is right there. They're not going to be obviously less talented than anybody else on the schedule, be it Baylor, be it Arkansas, be it, you know, obviously Boise state Stanford has a lot to prove. Um, so yeah, I mean, there are going to be some toss ups here that just because you're the second best doesn't mean, well, they're going 11 to one. They're still going to have to win some <laughs> close games. Um, and, and Notre Dame could be a close game as well, but if they win their fair share of those close games, you, you are looking at a situation where you're, uh, you know, most likely threatening to win double digits again. And that would be incredible given how tough these schedules have been for BYU and the buildup to the Big 12. BYU's not, you know, Utah and TCU and some of these others where they're going from G5 in. They've kind of prepared for this. So how do, you, how do you anticipate BYU will fare when it starts to compete in the Big 12? Well, the Big 12, you know, you think about the future Big 12 without OU in Texas. Um, you know, take OU away and you've got – you know, you ha there is no proven consistent top 10 or 15 program, but there is a heck of a lot of top 20, 25, 30 potential uh, top to bottom. I mean, this is going to be a conference 
You had four programs who have all been really good at least once in about the last five years. Houston, you know, has a chance to be quite good this year, I think, with what they return. Um, all four of those programs should fit right in. Just every game is going to be decided by three to seven points, and, and it's going to be, you know, I don't know from a national title contention standpoint what the Big 12 is going to have to offer, but it's going to be the most entertaining conference to watch top to bottom, and that's because I think all of the newcomers should be able to compete very quickly. Bill Connolly of ESPN is on BYU Sports Nation. The Cougars lose Tyler Algier, their great running back. They're hoping that they get some immediate injection of life uh, with a transfer from California. But, I mean, is the offense more about the quarterback than it is about replacing one of the all-time great running backs? What do you see there? Yeah, when I say BYU's uh, second in returning production, that, that formula is very much weighted on – what tends to make the most difference from year to year. And um, so quarterback obviously carries heavy weight in that formula. Receiving court, uh, carries a lot of weight. Running back really doesn't. It seems like running backs and linebackers are the positions where teams can, um, you know, they, they, they can make up ground uh, the quickest when they lose the starter. So um, that helps BYU right there. Now, Algier was awesome. Um, I, I really, really liked what he brought to the table. And we'll see, um, you know, any number of guys have gotten some carries here and there. Brooks is a very efficient runner as a whole, maybe not quite as explosive as Algier. Uh, but he, you know, he's good at getting five yards on first down. He's good at moving the chains on third and two, things like that. And, and so maybe you can kind of make up that production, but the biggest part is, yeah, yeah quarterbacks back. Most of the receivers are back. Uh, the line is, is back just about intact. And so, um, that's, that's going to kind of drive what, what are they 11th, I guess projected 11th in offensive SP plus this year. That's the major reason why. Yeah, if they go 11th, uh, yeah, BYU's in business, absolutely. Okay, let's let's uh, let's talk about an issue we have with you. We like <laughs> we like a lot of things about you. We don't like this one. Uh, no, Luke Staley, the 2001 Doak Walker Award winner, who averaged eight yards carry uh, in your top 100 college uh, football running backs <laughs> last six years. What's up with that? Uh, I will say with that list. Um, it, it was if you start to look at it, it was very very heavy on you know, seventies, eighties, nineties, when, uh -huh. when guys were running a lot more. And so when I adjusted for era, it, it was certainly very friendly for those. Uh, but the biggest thing is I, I'm just going to give a very broad disclaimer and say a uh, hundred backs in 60 years is basically one to two a year. Uh, some years had none. And uh, there were about 300 backs that probably could have made that list. And Ooh. that's really, that's an extremely unsatisfying mm. answer. And it's the only answer I'm going to get. It's a moral <laughs> victory, Bill. We'll take the moral victory right. that Luke would have been that's somewhere right. in that list of 300. Luke's near the top Absolutely. of white running backs from BYU to win the doke. In fact, he's the only one. <laughs> okay. Uh, we love your number system, obviously, but we're wondering, have you ever encountered a team and maybe this year where you, you look at what they're projected to do and you're just like, huh? How, how is that working out? Like, just a shocker. Is there any shocking team on your list this year when you look at the numbers? Well, I think, general, I mean, there are always some outliers. There are always some that, that I know are going to shock other people. What I have going for me is, you know, I know how they performed last year. I know which teams that SP Plus liked, whether their record was really up to it or not. And then I see the returning production list before I get to the projection. So I know who's, who's going to be projected to improve a lot. So usually I can at least brace myself, even if I know there are going to be some, some teams on that list that I don't really like where they end up, like say Tennessee at ninth, uh, which is where they were in February. I at least know it's coming. Uh, <laughs> others might not. Uh, and it might surprise others, but I can at least, uh, when I, when I, you know, when I hit the button, I know kind of what's coming. Now there are 131 teams in FBS and, and over the, the, the weeks following the projections, I'm going to start to notice things like, Oh, wow. I didn't realize they were in the top 40 or something like that. But as far as that top 10 or 15 goes, yeah, whether whether you agree or not, I at least know it's coming in advance. I don't have to, you know, brace myself. Okay, regarding what's coming, um, I know you're a big soccer fan. We love soccer as well. Um, what's the next frontier with quantifying soccer st statistically? Well, I think the the most interesting thing to me is is you know uh, soccer has gone a long way in recent years, just in terms of you know people understand what expected goals are and people understand. Um, it, it's not just an abstract kind of flowing sport where heart and effort are all that matter or anything like that. We can measure stuff now. And I think we're, we're starting to, the biggest advancement I think is just going to get to what amounts to 
box score stats, a box score creation that um, that you can kind of glance at a soccer match like you do a football game or a basketball game and just get a very good idea of here's how the game played out, here's who did well. Uh, that doesn't really exist. Um, every every format in the world is slightly different, and a lot of them are very good. But I do think we're we're getting to a point where you can just glance at a stat sheet and understand how a game. Uh, unfolded and that's mm. not something you really we've really seen in soccer all that much bill it's great to catch up with you i think jerem is drafting an addendum right now to make luke staley the 101st greatest running back that's over fine. the last 60 it, years just missed it <laughs> that's the other blanket part your guy was number 101 whoever it was <laughs> yeah um, exactly your guy was absolutely number 101 hey thanks for taking some time with this uh for those who don't know where can they find more of your work I mean, hop on Twitter. There's a, there's a document in there with everything I've done at ESPN, and that'll be the best place to start, ESPN underscore Bill C. You got it. Bill, thanks so much for the time, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Bill Connell, ESPN staff writer, college football numbers insider. He likes the Cougs. I like SP Plus. Well, his numbers like the Cougs. His numbers like the Cougs. Yeah, it's like Ken Pomeroy where he's just, you know, crunching numbers, and this is what they say, you know, uh, advanced stats, which, which are interesting. Like, it – there's no one stat besides a score or whatever. That's everything, but it's certainly something, right? And uh, BYU's offense expected to be awesome. Yeah. Defense 79th, he said. So, so he said climbing back into the top 50 this year, projected to be top 50. That's great. That's great. And uh, I think we expect that too. If that, if that happens with a combination of a good offense, we're in business, man. So oh. is, is the schedule harder or is BYU just better? That's the it's, question. It's, is it both? Well, and, and – He's making the argument that you've been making, which is, yeah, maybe Baylor and Oregon, Oregon aren't we, as good. We, we don't know. And if that's the case, we're in business, Spence. Let's go. We are in business. Arkansas and Baylor are coming to Provo. BYU gets to go to Austin. No, we no. don't know what in the world Oregon's going to be under their new head coach. Yeah, and and the hope is that Arkansas is not as good as they were last year. If Arkansas is that good, that's going to be a tougher game than we thought. I think that's going to be a tough it's game. It's going to be tough for Baylor to be as good as they were last year because, you know, they, they were the were Big awesome. 12 champs and won the Sugar Bowl. Yeah, probably not going to happen. <laughs> Although it was nice that uh, Matt Corral got hurt uh, for all missing that game. But, yeah. Golfer uh, Anik Hutchkovich coming up on her amazing play in West Coast Conference Championships this weekend. And let's keep it with football, like the future of BYU football wide receivers. Shall we don the blue goggles for the rest of the show? This is BYU Sports Nation. How many teams have earned two back-to-back? -back? Almost none. This is our year, Cal. It's been an accident. It's Caroline. I'm holding practice tomorrow afternoon at 3.45. You want to shut me down, you know where I'll be. I know being here is tough. We're all hurting. But here you can take that hurt and apply it to the game you love to play. They prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. 
BYU Sports Nation has its own YouTube channel. Get all the interviews as well as BYU Sports Nation right now episodes. Subscribe and share BYU Sports Nation YouTube channel. He is Jeremiah Spencer. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get content throughout the day at your convenience, follow all of the major social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, which is quickly becoming my favorite account to follow with oh that's a rabbit hole uh that'll take you a few hours later you're like where am i (laughs) why am i why am i in a 7-eleven with one shoe on oh my new favorite thing is to watch a comedian that broadcasts amateur golfers like they were doing a professional tour event it is super funny with the reports as we transition now back to basketball if you missed it Caleb Lohner and Gideon George of BYU Men's Basketball, according to reports, are entering the transfer portal and both have uh, not an intention of coming back to BYU. This is not just like an That's why you went to the portal. Thing, right, yeah. So our poll question of the day, Jeremy, which we have just sent out, is what is the biggest potential loss for BYU basketball? And the options include Gideon George, Caleb Lohner, Chris Burgess, or other. Chris Burgess leading right now at 47%, Caleb Lohner 36%, Gideon George 15%, 2% other. Here's why I agree with Chris Burgess being the one. He could certainly take a Caleb Lohner and or Gideon George. Sway to those guys to not far off Utah? Now think about it. Be like, oh, that would sting. BYU got Brandon Averett and Jake Toulson from Utah Valley. Yep. And others. Hey, listen. As we get to the Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. Just going to throw this out there. Utah now has a transfer point guard from Cincinnati that was teammates with Caleb at Wasatch Academy. Oh, he went to Utah? He yeah. went to Utah? So there's that. It's on. Once a friend, now a foe, Chris <laughs> Burgess. <laughs> Baseball gets three of four at Nebraska all by one run. On a scale of one to ten, how awesome is that? Uh, this is a nine for me. The only thing that would have been better is that BYU won all four. And they lost that game, I think, by one run. All four were decided by that's, one. That's, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we said it last week. I thought that they would rally uh, in a very, very tough situation with Mike Littlewood resigning in the middle of the season. Um, this is 9 out of 10. Good for the guys. Yeah. Not, yeah. 9.1. Just the top here. BYU Volleyball took three sets against number one ranked UCLA over the weekend. Losers talk about margin. Yeah, well, uh, okay. This is a year for moral victories for BYU men's volleyball. Fortunately. Okay. It was a moral victory against UCLA specifically on Saturday night. What did you learn about BYU in the matches against UCLA that maybe you didn't know before? The BYU is ready to make a run in this tournament uh, this week if they want. Uh, BYU beat Pepperdine. Uh, earlier this year in five, the split uh, had 15 aces in that. It's all depending on the serve. Mix Ramones had the serve going. Davide Gardini had the serve going. If BYU can do that, then they got a shot. They got a shot at getting to at least the semifinals of the MPS September. Because BYU's 8-16. They have no at-large opportunity here. But, yeah, BYU still had some fight. This team could have totally quit a long time ago. They did not. I loved what I saw. And I do need to put out a boost for, or at least a note about the BYU Sports Nation karma. You said, hey, go get a career high, get a 30 spot to Davide Gardini. 30 piece. And he did. And he did. And he did. He didn't know after the match. I'm the, the karma reigns supreme. I was like, Dude, you did it. He's like, did what? I was like, 30 kills, new career high. He goes, I did. Yeah. And then he said, how many points? That's an international question. Hey, I'm with you. I think BYU could upset a few teams in Let's the NPSF tournament. Let's go. BYU football signee Parker Kingston ran a 10 6 1 100 over the weekend. And fellow signee Cody Hagen ran a 10 7 7 in the same race. How stoked are you for that speed? Well, I'm stoked, but let's. Can they run a 5 1 6 unofficial 40, Jared? The answer is no. They cannot. They run much faster than they that. They run much faster, yes. Uh, I'm excited about the future for BYU's wide receivers, most specifically this season. Like, it's hard for me to look beyond. What's already awesome in the group right now with Puka Nakua, Gunnar Romney, Kibo. I mean, then you add Cody Hagan and Parker Kingston to the mix at some point. Like, the wide receiver crew is in really, really, really good shape. I, right I'm now. so excited about these two as a speedsters. It's awesome. Listen, Big 12 speed. We need that. How about this? Ramiro Alanis, a Florida man. It's always a Florida It's always a Florida man. man. It's always a Florida man has set the Guinness World Record for the most cinema productions watched of the same film. He chose to watch Spider-Man No Way Home and did so 
292 times. Unbelievable. In the theaters. Wow. <laughs> I hope we got comped on a few of those with, uh, you know, rewards I points. I don't know if I'll see the Temple movie that many times. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, which BYU football game, if you had to pay to watch it 292 times, would you do there's, that for? There's a lot of ones uh, I would love to. I'm not sure I would want to see any of them that many, but I think 2006 versus Utah would be quite interesting. Sure. If not that game for me, it's 1990 against Miami, the number one ranked Hurricanes. Come to Provo, rare hurricane watching Provo, Utah. It's a beautiful And they beat the number one Canes with Ty Detmer, which was really like just the major propellant for him winning the Heisman Trophy. And if I had to do it 292 times, you pick a different seat each time, right? Like experience it in different parts of the, you know, maybe a couple of times you just shop it in the gift shop the whole time, whatever. I saw a movie 10 times in theaters one time. Was it Lord of the Rings? It was Attack of the Clones. Wow. I saw it in like five different states as well. I was just, we would watch it on our way. I went to like Nabu one summer and back and we'd watch it in random things. I thought it was going to be- I got so sick of that movie, I can't even tell you. I, I can understand why. Plus that movie's not even that good, but Clone Wars is pretty good. <laughs> I'm watching it right now. Okay, coming up, who gets today's Rising Show? And Anik Hutchkevich. Standout golfer for the BYU women's team on her expectations for the WCC golf tournament yeah. this weekend. Also, she's got your daily tips. She's going to make us all better golfers. I know. I need some tips. This is BYU Go. Sports Nation. Your Mountain America All-Stars. Out of BYU, Alex, Alex Barcelo and Shaylee Gonzalez. Thanks for the warm welcome. So is this where we get the BYU card? But of course. The only place you can. This is really cool. Yeah, but mine's better. No way. Get your BYU <laughs> card from Mountain America today. It's perfect for students, alumni, and super fans. Okay, man. You got this. It's not that bad. Okay, it's a little bad. Just do it. Woo! That was unbelievable. Some things seem scarier than they really are, like buying a home. But your loan officer at Intercap Lending will help you get pre-approved and walk you through every step of the process. Intercap Lending, a name you can trust since 1978. I'm okay. I'm okay. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. As we've spent time working with so many groups around the world, we've learned a lot. I have really learned the importance of gratitude. African electrical systems. Well, I've learned that Kieran actually loves concrete. The power of cooperation. But above all, we've learned the world is a family. And fixing someone else's problems ends up fixing my own. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the newest Deep Blue podcast, I talked with soccer star Ashley Hatch about becoming the NWSL's leading scorer and a champion to scoring a goal for the USA 24 seconds into a game in Australia. The repping BYU and the church across the globe. Let's do it on the BYU Radio app or where podcasts are found. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. Joining us now in studio is a standout golfer for the BYU women's team. She is crushing it over her last seven tournaments specifically. Anik Hutchkovich is back. And Anik, I mean, first of all, congratulations on your recent success. Thank you. I need to know something. Did you beat Danny Ainge at golf? Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we usually play like quite a bit with him. He went to New Zealand with us uh -huh. for our foreign trip. Uh-huh. And Alicia and I, who's on our team, we usually play like a match play between him and um, Brian. Okay. And we beat them quite often. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've only beat us one time. So. How did they take that? Because they're both very competitive. Very competitive. Brian Santiago, associate, uh, or I think he's deputy yeah. associate, associate athletic director. Well, yes, they yes. keep coming back for more, so <laughs> <laughs> that just tells you. You want to hand him another L? Yeah. yeah Come cool. on back. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. It's tough to beat Brian and Danny. 
you they're know, a good duo. They're, Very competitive. They're pretty yeah. good. But you've got their and you got their number. Good. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now to the actual tournaments. I mean, as awesome as it is to beat Danny Ainge and Brian Santiago. <laughs> no, that might be more awesome. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you finished fourth at the Chambers Bay Invitational. What's the when you get to that spot and you're like in the final holes and you're trying to win a tournament like that? What's the mentality when you go into those final few holes? Personally, I just focus on exactly what I need to do in that moment because I tend to kind of go like, oh, my gosh, what can happen? Like I can either have a 10 on this hole or maybe hit in the fairway. So just kind of staying super calm, like I'll, I get super quick. And so I just like walk and I just count my steps and I'll be like looking at a tree or I'll just like <laughs> describe everything around me to stay present yeah. or else I'll get way too far ahead of myself. So. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like I've never that. heard that one. The describing the things around you to yeah. yourself. Yeah, it's so crazy. But yeah, no, no, no. It works. To it's stay working. In the moment. Yeah. But to stay in the moment, yeah. Which I was yeah. maybe that's the the tip. Maybe you have another one of of the average or below average golfers. Uh, you know, uh, Spencer's good. I'm just mediocre at best. But like, w what are some tips you'd give to those watching that are like, oh, I want to improve just a little bit, from someone who knows how to play the game. I would say kind of stop thinking about outcome and just try and make each shot the best. And, you know, like I think a lot of people get stuck in like, I need to make a birdie on this hole or things like that. But I think consistency is key. Yes. You know, just like one shot at a time, one hole at a time. Don't get too ahead of yourself and just play golf. You Tempo know? <laughs> and consistency. I got some great yeah. advice uh, from a friend in Palm Springs. Um who runs uh, PGA West, and he said, look, everyone wants to talk about hitting a long ball and, like, driving it a long way, and he's like, make putts. Yeah, that's key as well. Like, practice practice on the putting green more than anywhere else. <laughs> Just around the putting green. I'm like, okay, and yeah. that seems to have helped. Uh, these tips were brought to you by Anik Hutchkovich <laughs> of BYU and Women's PGA Golf. West. Yeah. Your team is number 37 in the latest golf team stat rankings. That will change uh, by tomorrow. What's the best thing that BYU Women's Golf has going for it right now, competition-wise? I think that coming into conference, we're super motivated because last year we kind of had a tough end to conference. You know, we were leading the, the whole way into the last four holes. And so kind of just being motivated off of that and coming back for revenge, I think, is mm. the biggest key for us. Like, we've been talking about conference since the first day of school. You know, it's been our goal. It's been our goal to go to regionals, to nationals. But I think we know the course. We know Reflection mm. Bay. We've played plenty of times. And so... Revenge is what it is, I think. <laughs> and you're Getting playing back. <laughs> back in Vegas where you're from. Yes. So have you played at this course before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My awesome. coach back home is, like, stationed at that course. So I've oh, played fantastic. it plenty of times. And our team has gone there quite a few times in the spring just to, like, get some good practice in. So Knowing it was where... The WCC championships were? Yeah, yeah. There was a date. Don't worry. We didn't play after the date that it wasn't allowed. Yes, but. gotcha. <laughs> sure. it, oh, you didn't cheat? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pepperdine, the rival in the yep, league? Yep, big rival. Yeah. What's that like? What are your emotions like when you see the women's golf team from Malibu show up? Um, you know, we don't pay attention to them. <laughs> we just... <laughs> We just know we're better, so we're just gonna okay. go okay. out there okay. and play okay, our game. Let's go! <laughs> All right, let's go! I, I, and I love, I love the fire because yes, you know they win sometimes, you win sometimes, yeah. right? And it goes yeah, back and forth. Back That's and a forth. good rivalry. Oh yeah, yeah. super good rivalry. But yeah. the men's competes with Pepperdine too. Mm -hmm. but Pepperdine won the Natty like oh, two years ago. They're another <laughs> They're level. They're another level. They're another level. Yeah. Okay, what's the key for this team to take the next step? Because obviously you're already a really good team. Right. But it's a very fine line often in golf. You know, the slimmest of margins can put you into the top 10 or top 12 or put you down around 37 or 40. So what's the next step? Um, I believe that just our belief in each other is super key because oftentimes, you know, you're kind of worried about like, oh, no, if I'm playing poorly, like it affects the entire team. But it's just like having trust within the team and just knowing like everyone's going out there giving it their all, showing up, and just doing the work, I think that's just what kind of makes us good and what will shave off those shots that count, yeah. you know? Because it's an interesting dynamic. It's an individual and team game at the same time. So right. how do you manage those sort of emotions of, I want to help us? Yeah. Uh, I think personally I focus on, like, myself and, like, exactly what I need to do because I know if I play good, it's going to benefit the team in any way. And so – 
yeah, just focusing on doing your best, shooting the lowest you can, making as much birdies as you can, and just it'll benefit it and for everyone in the end. Anik Kachkevich is on BYU Sports Nation. What's the best shot you've ever hit in a competition of any sort? Mm, that's a great question. I had a hole-in-one in Vegas one time. Well, that's tough to be. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was in actually an event that UNLV hosts, and it was like the third hole. And so I hit like, it was like 175, six iron, and it landed like an inch from the hole and just went, bounced to the side and went right in. This is going to be a good day. <laughs> <laughs> What's a, was the celebration epic or were you just like, yay, okay, well, next hole? At first I was like, I didn't know if it went in. Like, no one wants to celebrate if you don't know it really went in. Sure. And so I was like, oh, awesome. Like, good shot. And then everyone was like, oh, it went in, it went in. And I was like, oh, yay. <laughs> you <laughs> don't want to be too excited. It's pretty, it's pretty low key. Yeah, anyways. yeah. Yay. Like yeah. Peter Quest with his double eagle at the NCAA championships. We're like, that was awesome. And he's like, yeah, but I played a crappy rain. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, bro, Peter. Come on, man. Uh, Anik. Great to have you in Studio Thank B. So Let's give you some BYU Sports yeah. Nation karma for the West Coast Conference Championship. Good luck on yeah. Thursday. Thank you. We're ready. Okay. Go Cokes. Awesome. Okay, coming up, who gets today's elite voice of the day? And a shout-out for a career high on senior night. This is BYU Sports Nation. Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at TRIO. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TRIOORUM.com. Hello there. Mary. This young bear needs our help. Hello. It's just for one night. How would you like to come home with us? Paddington is a danger to this family. Paddington's the best thing that's ever happened to the children. I hope I don't look weird after all that. Where did you take the bear? That bear is the reason I am here. Paddington's been kidnapped! This family needed that bear every bit as much as he needed you. On the next relative race, how many teams will make it to day 10? We really need another team to get a strike. Ooh, good job. Kyle risks it all on a last second shortcut. One wrong turn would be lost. Yeah, we can do it. Tiffany learns her family lives closer than she thought. Are you serious? And a letter changes Rochelle's life forever. <laughs> This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. For download the podcast, just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, subscribe, rate, and review. We have a poll question of the day out asking, what is the biggest potential loss for BYU basketball with four options? Gideon George, Caleb Lohner. Assistant head coach Chris Burgess, who is now at Utah, and other. Jerem, what are the updates? Chris Burgess, 47%. Caleb Lohner, 36%. So those are the big two right there. And uh, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, disappointing. Uh, you know, I hear the reports of uh, Lohner and George in the transfer portal. But th this is the name of the game. If you're going to get some good transfers, you're going to have to give some. But, like, you don't have to, but this is how it works. We've not experienced this a ton where a high-profile BYU athletes leave BYU to go somewhere else because we like to think that, hey, BYU is kind of an, an end-game destination for a lot of athletes. Well, it doesn't always work out that way. Um, and, and if we're going to get some high-profile guys like Tijan Lucas and Puka Nakua and Alex Barcelo and Kingsley Suamatia, then, hey, sometimes you, you lose some guys Yeah, and girls. <laughs> And just because Caleb is such a fun, engaging person, I know I really like him. Like personally. it's it's sad to see him go and the energy that he brings right. to just life around basketball, not just on the court, but like he he is a really fun person to be around. It's a good hang. 
Absolutely. And we like that because it's a long season, you know. I wish him the best. If he ends up at the place he initially committed to, the University of Utah, with uh, Chris Burgess. I wish him individual I, success exactly. only. I, <laughs> I hope Caleb's awesome, just not against BYU. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope his team loses every game, but I no. I need uh, to I need to give a shout out to one of our producers here, Harrison Collier. He did the math for me. I said I was going to do yeah. it during the break, and I was yeah. trying to compile that. Uh, BYU loses almost fifty seven percent of their offensive scoring from last year's team. I'd think it'd be higher, honestly. Right, and it's because Foose and Seneca Knight and Trevin Nell, Trevin and, Nell and Spencer, Spencer like yeah. because there was some balance there, but still, I mean, uh, no, it's a big chunk and. The, the, this now, this now impresses upon me even more, Spence, that next year, because of the roster turnover, isn't entirely about next year. It's about building into the Big 12 more to me. Obviously, next year you want to win. You want to make the NCAA tournament. I'm not saying that's not the goal, but I think the bigger goal needs to be top of mind, which is to prepare to not get blasted in the Big 12, to compete, a.k.a. go 500 and be Iowa State, and still make a run in the NCAA tournament. I feel like if you make the NCAA tournament, you're positioning yourself to transition well into the Big 12. I just, well, yes, but I don't want to do it at the cost of grad transfers who won't be around. Does that make sense? Or if if it takes developing Dallin Hall next year so he's ready as a sophomore, then so be it. Depends what transfers you can get, how long they can be here. Like, BYU needs to get guys that can be here more than one year. I'm okay with a guy or two who are grad transfers. Like Brandon Aver and Matt Harms were fantastic two sure. years ago. Six seed at large. That was one of the best seasons in BYU well, history. Alex Barcelo is at the top of the list, right? Alex Barcelo is the exception to the rule here, though, because he's a three-point-a-game guy at a Power 5 who becomes the greatest shooter in the NCAA. And he like, had three years with BYU. Yes, because of COVID. So he's not a good example of what BYU is trying to do. It, like, yes and no, you want to get some guys who were underused who you can develop, but Alex is the shy, the brightest star in this type of example sure. that my point is ever had. My point is they're, look, they're looking for that next sure. Alex Barcelo. You probably need someone a little more proven quickly. They didn't have to take a chance. They didn't need Alex to be Alex that first year. He was a nine-pointed game He's guy. He's an incredible role fourth player. Fourth score. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, BYU doesn't have that luxury this That's year. how good that team was. Alex Barcelo was the fourth scorer on that yep. team. Woo! Yep. Our lead voice of the day, answering what's the biggest potential loss for BYU basketball, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from our guy Zach Vandermeid, at Zach underscore Vandy. What's up, Zach? Caleb Lohner. The reason I say this is because losing Burgess is part of the natural progression of coaching. Yeah. Chris is amazing, and it's a massive loss for the program, but a natural move for Chris, who played at Duke and Utah, he continues, Loner is a huge and avoidable loss. Yeah, I think so. Ideally, you'd keep a, a, a guy like that. But, yeah, sometimes assistants go. But, again, some yeah, I agree. But sometimes players are going to go. They're going to go. <sighs> and and it, if BYU had made the NCAA tournament, would Loner be in the portal? No, especially if he's a big part of it. It was the injuries to Gavin Baxter and Richard Harward that Things, everything changed. truly changed this the situation now BYU needs two big men and two guards and to plug and play and an now. assistant coach today's rise and shout out presented by Mountain America the official credit union of BYU athletics Davide Gardini dropping a 30 piece new career high in his final match in Smithfield 30 kills awesome. 30 kills it's amazing well done Davide well, done. we'll miss him too our thanks to today's guest Bill Connolly of ESPN and Anik Hutchkovich of BYU Women's Golf sorry to Dennis Pitta we ran out of time for Jeremy, I'm such a shout out to Kerry Summerhays Roberts. Good luck to the West Coast Conference Championships. Hey, we're only like 140 days away from football, Jeremy. Okay.